Hey there, my friends. Baldwin here. I know it has been a while, but here I am. A lot of stuff has happened from dealing with a hurricane to feeling uninspired, but that is not why I am here today. As you know, the so called successor series to Dangan Rompa was announced a while back. This is the Master Detective Archive Wrinkle. Well, today we got some bits of interesting information about the game from the man himself, Kodaka, that I think are very cool from how long the game is to even asking him about a Danganronpa sequel. Now, this interview is done by Inside Games, a Japanese site, so I had to use Google Translate to be able to understand the stuff being discussed here. I will not be going into everything, just the stuff I think is interesting. Okay, at the start of the interview, we find out that he has been working on this game ever since Dangan Rompa BT released back in 2017. That is five years now. As soon as he was done with Beatly, he started work on this one. And that means this was the game he was still doing with Spike Chunsoft when he left. With this game, he says that just like Dangan Ropa represents the 2010s, this game will represent the 2020s. That's why the game is a 3D adventure game. But really this makes me think, then what was Ultra the Pearl Girls then? Was it a 2020s mindset game or not? It is a 3D game, but it's still not as 3D as this game seems to be. Next, he gets into what the difference between this game and Danganronpa is. This game is a dark fantasy detective action, while Danganronpa is a high-speed detective action. The difference with this is that Danganronpa was set in a school, but Raincoat is set in a town, and the sense of scale has changed greatly, like the Persona series. You select a location from the entire map and explore the 3D map. Well, there are multiple towns, so it's quite bulky, including the poisonous and absolutely of Danganronpa. I put the nuances of various elements into the genre name Dark Fantasy Detective Action. Now, there is something else interesting here. At the interviewer asks if you could say the main character for this game is an ultimate detective like the ones in Danganronpa. If the translation is right, Kodaka seems to imply it's very similar to that, but the super detective has specialized skills unlike an ultimate detective. Now, the interviewer also tries to ask Kodaka if Shinigami is the monokuma of this game, if she is anything like him. Kodaka makes it clear that Shinigami is a friend, and that is not a hostile character like Monokuma was. But later, he also seemed to imply that while that may be true, there could be moments where you could suspect of any characters, even including her. That seems suspicious. Another interesting bit here is that the game is not rated yet, and he hopes the game is not rated 18 plus, as he's trying for that not to happen, but makes it clear that this is not a game for all ages. Now, on why he chooses the Switch as the console for this game, he says that the mystery time games are best for the type of console the Switch is, a handheld. I must agree with him here, since Danganronpa was best on the PlayStation Vita and PSP. Now, we get to the good stuff as the interviewer asks how long the game is going to be. I will read what Kodaka says here directly. Assuming 40 to 50 hours, you can go around town and receive small requests from the residents, and there are intimacy events like in Danganronpa, so there are plenty of replay elements and subquests. Yes, you heard that right, this will be a long game with lots to do, and not only that, just like Danganronpa, this game will have free time events. Now, the big one, the question I'm sure all you'll be asking yourselves. When asked, is there any possibility of a sequel to Danganronpa, this is what Kodaka had to say on the matter. I do not feel like making Danganronpa after Renko is over. I do not know when it will be, but I may make a sequel, or maybe not, in the first place. I think it would be nice if there was a Danganronpa created by a creator other than myself. 
So pretty much, he seems to be more interested in letting someone else make a sequel to Danganronpa than him doing it, but he had not said he won't do it either. It could happen or not. This is interesting, since I do remember some news that said that Danganronpa can only happen with him, but now the idea of someone else making it seems possible. Now, the final thing Kodaka says here is that Renko has a Danganronpa feel to it but it also includes a lot of different elements as a new IP. I think that not only fans of Danganronpa, but also people who don't know it will enjoy it. Of course, there will be twists and turns and it will be very moving, so please wait for the release. I don't know about you people, but the more I read about the game, the more hype it gets, as uh, this will be the next big thing for Kodaka, hopefully. Anyway. But what about you? What do you think? Are you looking forward to Rainbow? If so, tell me in the comments below. This is Omega Baldwin. See you next time. Bye, my friends.